Bidenomics, the president's leaning in. He's decided to own it in the way Obama leaned into Obamacare. I like it, he said. I like it. And here's Joe Biden uh, just on Tuesday loving Bidenomics, SOT 18. The Financial Times and the Wall Street Journal, I don't think they meant it as a compliment as they started referring to my economic policy as Bidenomics. Well, guess what? It's working. Yeah. <laughs> what would a Biden stop be without the creepy whisper? So is it is it working? It's not working, Megan. It's not working. I, I love it. I love the fact that just because he's put a little brand name around it and a trademark Bidenomics that all of a sudden that he could say that it's working. We have a war that's going on here, a financial war, and it's not between political parties. It's between the middle and working class and the elite. And the reality is under President Biden, people who are in the middle and working class have gotten crushed. They cannot uh, keep up with the cost of living. We know that is costing almost 8,000 plus extra dollars a year just for the basics. Wages haven't kept pace with it. We can't, uh, people can't afford to buy homes. And uh, you know the, the basic tenor of the financial situation is one where people are really struggling and they feel like the American dream is more and more out of reach. The challenge that uh, we have in terms of, of um, Biden is that the media keeps telling him what a great job they're doing, that, you know, home ownership isn't important or that, you know, home owner, people not selling their homes, coming out of their homes is the cause of why the economy is stagnating or why the Fed is being held back instead of pointing the fingers at the people who are creating these policies. The reality is that people know what's going on. They go to the grocery store, they try to keep up uh, with their payments. And while the economy may not be having a broad recession, we are definitely seeing these signs of individual recessions where people are dipping into savings and loading up on their credit cards and killing their personal balance sheets. Um, and, and at the expense of the American people, the economy is still, quote unquote, doing okay. Mm, okay, so it's very true, according to every poll, that the economy is the number one issue for voters, Dem yeah. or Republican, number one issue. Uh, the real clear politics of all polls shows Biden's job approval on the economy is only 38%, almost 60%, 58.9% disapprove of the job he's doing. So he's basically lost two-thirds of the American uh, electorate's confidence uh, when it comes to the economy. However, however— I listen, you know, to podcasts on the left and the right and take my news in from the left and the right, just so I'm aware of what everybody's saying. And about, I don't know, a month ago, The Daily, the New York Times podcast, it's their daily news podcast, it's called The Daily. Yeah. They gave him the most glowing progress report on Bidenomics. And I, here are just some of the stats. The current U.S. unemployment rate is now 3.5%. It was 6.3% when Biden took office. Current annual inflation rate is 3.2%. It was 6.5% back in 2022 and flirted up even higher than that. Um, and what they were saying on The Daily, Carol, is it's worked that we had the inflation going up, 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 up. And the Fed stepped in and started raising the interest rates and kind of pushed it and pushed it and pushed it and tried to thread the needle so that they wouldn't push it so much that they tip us over into a recession. And by George, they did it because the inflation rate has indeed calmed down and we haven't gone into a recession. And despite all these credit rates now, the you know, being so much higher to get a mortgage or get a car, get a loan, people are still borrowing and spending. So boom, there's the pigskin <laughs> spiked in the end zone. You're welcome. It's working. <laughs> I, I I love the fact that, um, you know, Mark Twain once said that there's lies, damn lies and statistics. And without context, you can make numbers say whatever you want them to say. So Joe Biden comes out and the media, like The New York Times, will run cover for this and say, look at all the jobs we've created. We've been this amazing job creator. You're not mentioning the fact that it wasn't really creating jobs. It was reclaiming jobs because we shut down a third of the economy. So 
So when you open those back up, those jobs came back online because they existed before. But it's not like he's had this amazing uh, job creation program or environment that has fostered incredible job creation. So he wants to take credit for that. Something like the inflation rate, th this is a, a head scratcher, but I knew they were going to do this. I tweeted about this multiple years ago because you know we are still having increased inflation above a sustainable level. The fact of the matter is it went up so high into the nine plus percent range that when you are comparing what's going on this year versus last year, sure, it's not you know as high in terms of the growth rate compared to last year versus last year versus the year before that. But we've still got another three plus percent on top of that. And that's if you even believe that inflation rate, you know, they, they, they have. So this is like, just to clarify, this is like when I go to the doctor and he says, <laughs> you gained two pounds this year. And I say, what are you getting on me about two pounds for? Who gives a shit? And he says, you know what? If you gain two pounds a year for 10 years, guess how much weight you're going to be in, in 10, 10 years from now. And he's like, like at a point 20, I'm going to be 20 pounds every year, which is a lot harder to lose. So if I gain the two pounds in this year and then I say, get off my back, but then I don't think about it. And then I go back two years from now and I've gained another three pounds. I can't just be like, it's only three pounds. He's like, no, you're five pounds heavier than you were two, like, right? So this is what you're talking about. Yeah, and I'm going to add another wrinkle to that. So it's basically like you gained five pounds last year, and then this year you gained two pounds. You go, well, doctor, I'm doing so much better. I only gained two pounds this year. Okay, but right. you're up a net seven pounds. Right, and right. that is the crux of the issue. And so we're still at a rate that is killing the purchasing power of the U.S. dollar. So every dollar that you're working for is purchasing less and less. And this is still at an unsustainable rate. And by the way, they haven't fixed any of the structural problems that caused many of these issues. So yes, we're in a period where things, uh, the growth rate looks like it might be going down. You're, you're now gaining two pounds instead of five. But what happens if next year you gain three because we haven't fixed our energy issues and we really haven't fixed the structural issues in terms of labor supply and we haven't fixed housing and we haven't fixed all the things that the Fed can't print. They can print dollars, but they can't print energy and they can't print housing. Uh, so we have these long-term structural issues that have been caused both by the Federal Reserve as well as by the Biden economic policies. And we haven't done anything to shift that. So we have a couple data points that, okay, yeah, we've gained two pounds in instead of five, but it doesn't mean we're out of the woodwork yet. And either way, this is still real cost, long-term cost that you are going to bear unless there is a massive period of deflation that undoes things, which you know potentially comes with the bad other bad scenarios like a recession or whatnot, um, you, you are going to be incurring those costs for the rest of your lives. And that is the, the fundamental issue here. And the American people aren't stupid. They understand that. And that is why so many people are unfavorable to the Biden pre presidency, even people who are Democrats and, and progressives, because they understand that the American dream is now out of reach and that the policies that he's putting forth, whatever he calls them, are not truly stop solving the underlying problem. So where did you learn about money? You know, budgeting, saving, investing, and spending. If you're like me, it was not in school. My parents did the best they could. Mm -hmm. Not really on the money front. They did nothing. <laughs> But now I want my kids to be better at Money Matters than I was at their age, which is where Busy Kid comes in. Busy Kid is an interactive money management app for kids and teens to help them learn how to earn, save, invest, and spend money wisely. It gives them real-life experience and allows parents to still be a safety net with approvals and monitoring. The more kids earn, save, invest, and spend on the app, the more they build healthy financial routines to use as adults. Busy Kid is great for kids and teens 5 to 17 years old, and everyone gets a personalized debit card to learn how to shop and how to manage invisible money. Busy Kid's offering a limited time special for my audience right now, 20% off a family subscription. So for less than 4 bucks a month, this app and credit card can transform how your kids think about and use money. It's not exactly a credit card. It's like a debit card of sorts. To start, Download Busy Kid and enter the promo code MK to get 20% off. Again, download Busy Kid and use promo code MK for 20% off. There's even a 30 day guarantee. Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.